Hello everyone, welcome back to On The Fly. Today we're going to be taking a look at the team that's going to be representing Canada at the 2024 World Women's Championship currently happening in Utica, USA. So as we break down this team, starting off with what's going on. And I mean, they had a pretty good team yet again this year. Definitely posed for another deep, deep run. And once again, you know, coming into a tournament like this, Canada has always been the favorite. This year, I see no reason why not. Obviously, the U.S. has a lot of firepower. So does Canada. Normally, it comes down to those two teams. This year, I think we could see for the first time another team sort of pounce in there. We'll get a little bit into that a little bit later. But with that being said, let's start with who will be representing Canada at this year's championship. Starting off with the forwards with Laura Stacey, Sarah Fillier, Brianne Jenner, Sarah Nurse. Natalie Spooner, Emily Clark, Emma Malte, Marie-Philippe Poulain, Blair Turnbull, Kristen O'Neill, Jamie Lee Rattre, Julia Gosling, Danielle Sertanaki, and then the defense, Jocelyn LaRock, Renata Fast, Ella Shelton, Ashton Bell, Aaron Ambrose, Jamie Bourbonnet, and then Nicole Gosling, and lastly, the goalies with Anne Renee Debien, Emma Smashmeyer, and Kristen Campbell. So with that being said, another very, very solid team. You see a lot of returnees from the previous team. And when we look at it, right, that's always seems to be important, especially for a team like Canada, who's pretty well regarded and has a lot of firepower, especially on the women's side. So we'll see, you know, sort of how they shape up. I mean, when we look at who's in their division, you always look to sort of the obvious candidates. The U.S. will always be a team that's going to be a tough matchup. As well, Finland this year, I think, is another team that has a, a little bit of potential, especially with the PWHL coming in full effect. There are quite a few Finnish players in that league, and I think we see that sort of translate into the World Championship this year. That is definitely going to be something to watch, and we'll see with all these different teams who have certain players who, you know, have got a lot more, per se, reps, and that's always seemed to be the problem for a lot of these women's teams, uh, especially with the other nations, that they never really had an, uh, more or less an ability to have that ice, but now they do. They have their own league. They have lots of players coming in, and we've even seen it, you know, with the, the, the World Women 18s, where we've seen Sweden the last couple of years. They're a team that hasn't um, hasn't really been in Group A in a while. Remember, Group A, all five teams do qualify for the quarterfinals. But that's the biggest thing, right? When we look at it, Canada is a team that's going to be a little bit more, you know, sort of, they're, all, they're always going to be their star-studded power. That's what Canada is. But at the same time, there's teams that are starting to chip up from the bottom. That's something to really watch for at this tournament. And now we'll take a look at the schedule for Canada as they start off action on April 4th at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time against Finland. April 5th, they'll play the Swiss at 3 p.m. So April 7th, they'll play 3 p.m. against the Czechs. And April 8th, they will conclude their preliminary round with the U.S. at 7 p.m. Then we'll go to the quarterfinals. They automatically make it as they are in Group A. That will be on April 11th. Semifinals will be on April 13th. April 14th will be the bronze medal game at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, as well as April 14th, 5 p.m. So with that being said, lots of games to be played. And once again, Canada, another team that when we look at it on paper, they're there to go far. And I think when we look at what the gold medal means for them this year, it's another road and it's another path towards where they want to be. Especially consider last year, they got knocked off. This year is a bounce back year for them. And I fully expect them to be at least comp competing. You know, when we take a look at the lines, we'll flip it up here. I think one of the key people that we have to look for is what happens with the goaltending. And Renee Debian has to be crucial. And for me, she has to be the starting goaltender. When we look at it, who else but Captain Clutch, more or less, when we look at it, not quite the captain, but she is probably one of Canada's most crucial players that we'll see. Emirates Mashmire have also put the second. Kristen Campbell's another third goalie. Really, any of those could play. It's just a matter of who sort of gets hot at the right time. Now, let's take a look at the lines. When I this, These are projected lines. They're not what's going to happen with Canada, but I do expect this to happen. You know, we put the Montreal, PWHL, Montreal players together. You know, O'Neill, Poulin, Stacey. Poulin and Stacey have been playing together for long long time all the way dating back to the olympics they have chemistry that is unmatched that line especially when you put o'neill they haven't really played together too much poulin got hurt a little bit earlier in the year so o'neill and stacy have sort of got a little bit of chemistry going but at the same time those three i think will play pretty well together all coming from the same pwhl team we'll see if that's the case you'll see a lot of that in these lines nurse and spooners another one pwhl toronto 
as well as Brianne Jenner. You know, that's a line that's just seemed to always been there. And I think when we look at it, that's another sort of uh, line that's going to sort of just gel really nicely. Chemistry is the hardest thing to find at these tournaments. And when you can find, you know, people that have played together in years past, that is very, very crucial. And I think when we look at these lines here, second line, especially with Nurse and Spooner, they've played together. Brianne Jenner has always been a part of that line in some capacity. So I think once again, that's another crucial line for Team Canada. As well, then we take a look at some of the more gritty grinder type players with Blair Turnbull, Sarah Fillier, and Emma Malte. I think that's another line that's really going to turn some heads. You know, they're they're a little bit more gr grinder-ish, you know, third line, what you're looking for there. And lastly, the fourth line, this is one of my favorite. You put sort of the, if you want to call it newbies on the team with Clark, Julia Gosling, and Sertanaki. And I think those, especially the last two, Gosling and Sertanaki, is one that I'm really interested to see. Whether or not they can step up on the big stage and perform. We've seen those two really per, uh, really sort of perform in the rivalry series. We'll see if they can continue that. I think it's a very, very good step, uh, especially for women's hockey, to be able to sort of pick up where they left off with two sort of rookies to this team. And I think they'll play a really, really skilled game, but at the same time, they know what, what they have to do to be successful. And lastly, the extra forward. Remember, 13 forwards are allowed to carry on the bench. Doesn't mean Jamie Lee Rattray isn't going to play. I just believe that she more or less deserves to be on the team in sort of a I can play any line role. And I think that's where she really, really sort of steps into her game. And that's where, you know, she sort of separates herself. She doesn't really need set line mates because what she does is she gets in there and she just causes problems. You know, you think back to the last couple world championships, back to the Olympics, it's always seemed to come down to her and how well she plays. So I don't think you can really stick her on one line to say here, but I, what I do think is she's going to be a key asset to Team Canada in this tournament. Next up is the defense. We have LaRock and Fast, PWHL Toronto's finest. And I think once again, you know, try and keep that line chemistry, especially especially on the back end, where it's, it's a lot of sort of knowing where your partner is that's going to be a crucial part for Canada. See how quickly they can sort of build back that chemistry. You know, before it was a lot of Team Canada, you know, rivalry series, world championships, Olympics. So they've sort of always played together. But now, you know, you sort of pick up different line mates through the years, especially with the PWHL sort of in full effect. We'll see if that changes anything too much here. But at the same time, we'll move along second line here with Shelton and Ambrose. And lastly, the third line with Bourbon and Bell. As well, I put Nicole Gosling as the uh, sort of the extra D I expect her to get her rounds in. Uh, I just can't see her starting over anybody quite yet. I'd like to see a little bit more out of her game. And for those who aren't aware, yes, Julia Gosling and Nicole Gosling, they are cousins. So kind of a fun little family connection uh, sort of to sum up Team Canada's here. And then lastly, we sort of touched on it already. The goaltenders, Debian, Mashmeyer, Campbell, really a toss-up. I'm going to give it to Debian. She always seems to have it, especially in those key, key moments so I think when we look at it, she has to be sort of the starting goaltender. Mashmeyer and Campbell always seem to sort of fall behind that. But lastly, we'll take a look at the expectations. And we look at the expectations. Really, it's gold medal or bust for Canada at this year's World Championship. I find it very, very difficult to think anything else, especially when you look at this firepower, especially when you have, you know, all the PWHL players coming, as well as a couple college players that are sort of mending into that lineup i think at the end of the day canada is posed for great success at this tournament we will see what they do so be sure to like and subscribe as we have, will have full coverage full day recaps full previews the rest of the teams will be coming out later this week so be sure to hit the notification bell so you never miss the upload but with that if you made it this far in the video thank you for watching if you'd like to drop a like if you really like consider subscribing tell all your friends in the comment down below your thoughts on team canada until next time see you